I guess I might have told Rod about my ushering days because I had a crazy, we had a crazy manager who wouldn't talk to us but just did signals. And, you know, if, if he wanted you to, I was called the spot girl because I was the tallest and had the loudest voice. And so he would line all of us usherettes up at the end of the lobby, and he would go from right to left, to the left. right, and he would point, and he'd go, spot, that would be me, and then he'd say, shoot aisle two, shoot aisle three, or shoot the balcony. And this was candy for some reason, and so he'd point to the next girl. She was assigned to the candy. Another one was box office. I think this was box office. <laughs> it was, I mean, he was nuts. And so I would stand in the middle of the lobby in this amber spot and say, aisle two straight ahead or the stairway to your right. And then he would come and give me other signals and so forth. And there was one time he was wanted on the phone and somebody told me, they said, go tell him he's wanted on the phone. Mr. Batten was his name and I knocked on the door he said, yes, what is it? And I went in, I said, Mr. Batten, sir, you're, you're, you're wanted on the phone out front. He said, Burnett, whenever I'm wanted on the phone, you don't tell me I'm wanted on the phone. You knock on the door, you stick your head in, and you do this. So anyway, <laughs> so I was fired because I was on aisle two one night, and Strangers on a Train was playing. It's Alfred Hitchcock. And this couple, this was before they would have showings, people would just come in in the middle of a movie and sit and wait until it was, they saw it all over again and say, oh, this is where we came in, and then they'd leave. So this couple came in and wanted to be seated the last five minutes of a Hitchcock movie, Strangers on a Train. And I'm this movie buff, and I'm saying, oh, please, can't you just go get some popcorn or get, you know, get a drink of water or something? Because it'll spoil it for you if you see the end of the movie, it was really, and they were saying, we want to sit down. I said, oh, please. Mr. Batten came up, looked at me. Now, we had these harem outfits that we wore, and we had epaulets and fezes. I mean, really insane outfits, usherettes outfits. He came up, he said, what's going on here? And they said, well, she's not, she won't let us sit down. I said, but it's the last five minutes, Mr. you know, we're in the movie. He said, Burnett? And I said, yes, sir, and he went, and he ripped off my <laughs> I was drummed out of the core. So I must have told this story to Rod that week or something. I don't know what, because he wrote that particular character in the pilot. Long-winded way of explaining the Twilight Zone pilot. A hundred years later, uh, they said the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce wanted to put my star uh, in the um, sidewalk. So I said, I would love it can you put it right outside of that theater where I was fired? And that's exactly where it is. And that was just a block away from where we lived.